I have a headache. I don't think I can teach today. I need to go see a doctor. Hi, I'm Diane from GoNaturalEnglish.com, your personal English coach and motivator. I don't really have a headache, but I did want to talk to you guys about how to talk to a doctor in English. Do you feel overwhelmed when going to the doctor? Maybe you have kids and your kids translate for you, but the kids don't really know how it goes with a doctor and they may not really translate correctly. Maybe you feel overwhelmed and you feel like you can't speak for your children or for yourself. I know that that's the experience my mom had and that I had as a child translating for my mom at the doctor. It was not a fun experience. It was overwhelming for all of us. And I found this to be a very interesting topic that is also related to a blog post that we have already mentioned or talked about. We'll leave the description and the link to the blog down below. Make sure you check it out. It links very well with the topic that we're going to go to today. I will model a dialogue between a doctor or anybody that works at a doctor's office and a patient. Comment below what situations you want to learn more about or which scenarios you feel overwhelmed with that you would like to know more about. Maybe it's going to your kids' schools or going on a date or going to a social gathering, maybe talking at work or speaking to your coworkers. Let me know what you think is very important to you that you would like to learn more about. Stay to the end of the video and I am sure that you'll feel more confident when you go to the doctor next time. Just keep practicing, watch this video as many times as you need to, pause, write it down, whatever you need to do to improve your fluency when going to the doctor. If you like these English tips that make you become fluent fast, make sure you give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe. Some misconceptions you may have is maybe you think that there's always going to be an interpreter or a translator. Maybe somebody else can translate for you because you need a really advanced level of English or you just are too shy. And these are all very valid points, but we have to get over that hump to be able to get better and increase your fluency in English. So to set the stage, we're going to go to a doctor's office, not a hospital. A hospital is mm, a little bit different. I just want to cover how it would go when you go to a doctor's office, starting when you make the phone call to make an appointment. Without further ado, let's get started. Hello, I would like to make an appointment, please. Sure, what's going on? My son is not feeling well. He has a headache, he has diarrhea, he's been vomiting, he's just not looking well, and I think he has a fever. Okay, yeah, that's no problem. Um, do you have your insurance information? Yes, I have the insurance information. Sure, what is the insurance provider's number? The number is and then blah, 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 blah. What's your son's name and date of birth? His name is David Ramos, and his date of birth is March 27, 2005. Great. Do you prefer mornings or afternoons? I prefer the mornings. Perfect. We have an appointment for tomorrow at 9 a.m. Is that okay? Yep, that works perfect. Thank you. All right, we will see you and David on Wednesday. That is a dialogue on the phone between maybe the appointment setter and the patient. Some takeaway points and vocabulary in this conversation were the insurance, insurance number, name, date of birth, symptoms. So what was the person feeling? We said headache, maybe fever, diarrhea, vomiting and also which date and time to have the appointment. Now that you are ready for your appointment, this is how it's gonna go at the doctor's office. Hi, how can I help you? Hi, I have an appointment for my son at 9 a.m. His name is David Ramos. Okay, please fill out these forms and bring them back when you're ready. So you're, they're gonna give you uh, two, three forms and this is just basic information about your son, medical history, their you know, basic information, name, date of birth, address. And once you're finished, you bring it back to the front desk. I have finished. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We will call you when the doctor is ready for you. 
After you finish signing all the forms and you bring it to the front, then you just have to wait until the doctor or a nurse is ready for you. Now a nurse has called David into the doctor's room. David? Yep, right here. How are you, David? What's going on? And you as the mom, you want to speak for your child and explain what's going on. Hi, yes, David is experiencing some headaches, some vomiting, diarrhea, and a little bit of a fever. I'm a little concerned. Okay, I understand. Uh, we'll take a look at his vitals and then we'll see what's going on with your son. Now that the doctor has come in, they will typically ask the patient, they will give them some instructions about what to do next. All right, David, please take your shoes off and step on the scale, please. So this is when they're trying to weigh the patient, see what their weight is and also their height. So sometimes you will step on and they will measure the height of the patient at the same time. All right, follow me to room A and we will be right with you in just a moment. Once you're in the room with the doctor, then the doctor will check the vital signs of the patient. And this includes blood pressure, checking the ears, nose and mouth, the eyes as well, and they will listen to the so your lungs, the doctor usually will check for the breathing, your heart, and since it seems like the patient may have some stomach issues, maybe listen to the belly, because David was experiencing diarrhea and vomiting. Some questions that will be asked after checking the vitals are the following. Have David eaten anything different in the past few days? Is there something different in his diet? Yeah, we actually had some salmon yesterday or the day before yesterday and ever since he was feeling a little different. Was that the first time David had eaten salmon? Yeah, it was his first time and he didn't take it very well. Well, it sounds like maybe David has food poisoning or a stomach bug. Oh, that explains a lot. I was worried. I didn't know what had happened to David, but that makes sense. Now that we know the diagnosis of David, which is a stomach bug or food poisoning, this is when you eat something that is maybe undercooked, maybe you are allergic to, or it just did not sit well in your stomach. That is what we call a stomach bug or food poisoning. All right, do you have any more questions for me about your son? Is there something I need to give him to make him feel better? Because he's been throwing up a lot. He should probably stay hydrated and if he has a fever, just give him some Tylenol and he should be able to feel just fine in just a few days. Thank you, doctor, I appreciate it. So now the doctor has given instructions about what David should do. Please keep in mind, I am not a medical professional. This is just an example of a conversation you might expect. Now that you have heard a um, dialogue between a doctor and a patient, let's go through some very common symptoms that you can express to the doctor or if it's an emergency or you need to call your boss and tell them what's going on. Let's run down a few vocabulary terms that are important when it comes to symptoms. Headache, fever, diarrhea, vomiting, dizziness, chest pain, arm pain, stomach pain, back pain. If you go to the gym all the time, you may pull a muscle. So it's when you like your muscles have ripped and it hurts a lot. And these are a few terms that make it easier for the doctor to determine what is going on and to give you instructions. Make sure you follow the doctor's instructions and prescriptions depending on what you need. This is a great way to practice, but otherwise, if you are not really sure, be sure to ask. They sometimes have interpreters or a nurse will speak your language. And for the most part, a visit to the doctor doesn't take very long unless it's something very serious. If it's serious and you know what you want to ask for, just make sure you Google the terms, have that ready for the doctor if they don't have an interpreter. But this is mainly what a routine check will do. 
when you go to a doctor's office. Nothing too crazy, but I hope that that was able to, I was able to help you a little bit with what to look out for when you go to a doctor's office or maybe just even to call and make an appointment. Don't miss free Go Natural English tips. We will send them to you. Just sign up with the link below at gonaturalenglish.com slash email. I hope this was really helpful for you guys, mainly for those who want to practice speaking and maybe are a little bit shy. Start with a phone call. You'll be good. And if you have any questions or concerns or want another topic that is really interesting to you, leave it in the comment below and I will check it out. Maybe I'll do it on my next video. If you'd like to continue learning, I highly recommend our online English course as well as our blog post that is connected to all of our videos. Make sure you give this video a like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys on my next video. Bye!